It sure has been a journey so far. Feels like it was just yesterday I was anxiously fumbling my way through putting together my 3018 Prover. And it's been about nine, ten months so far. As I was going through the forums, I saw a fairly popular expression, and that was, I wish I had a larger cutting area. I know I found myself also making those comments at just about three months in, maybe a little sooner. Now, there is nothing wrong with my 3018. It does the job it was intended to. Uh, there were some DIY and third-party options I could have gone with to increase the cutting area of my 3018, but I had a lot of projects lined up, and I just didn't want to go down that long, um, just in case I ran into any issues. Uh, nowadays, there are official kits uh, that give you more cutting area, but I'm happy with the way I went. So in preparation, I took to the internet forums and spent a couple months looking at this question there and taking in what I could. Now, four machines kept popping up in those answers. It was the Long Mill, Onefinity, Worker Bee, and Bob CNC. There are, of course, more than that. But for hobby grade, easy to get, those were always one of the answers. Uh, in the end, I went with the CNC Labs Long Mill. Main reason being that, one, it was open source. Uh, it had a solid build. And thirdly, its size. Uh, we'll get into the nitty gritty of that later, but first I want to say thank you all. The channel has over 500 subscribers now, and I am excited and looking forward to keep bringing you videos that give you a starting point for your projects or just break down the questions you do have. If you are not subscribed, you can join all of us by hitting that subscribe button and then ring that bell. I also encourage you to comment below if you have any questions and for others to share your insight as well on those questions. Then last in the promotional aspect of things, remember you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit as well where I will post sneak peeks and final shots of my current projects. Now, even before my machine got here, I needed a table slash workspace for it. Now, I get half of the garage and my wife's car gets the other half. I either had to find a spot up against the wall and due to the shelving in the garage, that would prove to be difficult uh, for access freely from all sides. So I decided on a rolling table. So that way, when my wife's car can be parked outside, I could roll it out and have plenty of space. My table measurements are 48 by 48 by 34. It has retracting caster wheels, a bottom side storage, and is a good height for me. There are a lot of uh, creative people out there, so I highly recommend that you take your time checking out their tables. What I struggled with here is the complete setup. How would it sit? Um, how the wires were to be run, where would everything plug into, etc., etc. In the end, I just had to tell myself, make sure the outside dimensions of the machine will fit, and we'll figure out all the other stuff. I really envy you all who can uh, pre-plan the crap out of these things and have all the wiring links just right. I'm more like an abstract artist. All the parts go where they can go or need to, and the machine works. It's just not the perfection of cable management I would like. But enough. Unboxing the long mill was a pleasant experience, and my two daughters helped me go through everything. Uh, they lasted a little bit longer than I thought they would, and uh, I think they got about an hour, hour and a half in before they finally called it quits. All the parts were well packaged in the long box. The only thing you cannot order through them is the spoil board or table. So make sure you calculate that into your overall uh, costs as well. Most everything is color coded or at the very least easy to identify out of the box. There are a couple different variations of the long mill and I ended up going with the 30 by 30. Uh, I did go with the recommended 65 millimeter Makita router, the magnetic uh, dust shoe, touch plate, and end mill starter set. So with all the add-ons, it came in just over $1,500. And I will have to say that is a good middle of the road price for a hobbyist CMC machine. Uh, this of course did not include any freight or tariffs, which if you are outside of Canada, you will be responsible for with the carrier. I was able to pay my tariffs online with UPS once it crossed the border and was stateside in transit to me. 
The long mill is made by CNC Labs, and the directions for assembly can be found on their website. I will put a link down below. They also have several videos by them and others going over assembly, so check those out. As for the quality of the instructions themselves, overall, a very well-written guide. Where I did struggle in the installation was with getting the eccentric nuts just right. I would say maybe there is a better way to handle that. Maybe not. But just pay close attention to those on those steps. The feet of the machine are 3D printed. And while most of mine were printed very nicely and clean, I did have a couple that had some issues. But not enough so that it affected the stability of the part. They are FDM printed, so they have a rougher feel to them. I think it would be cool to see these parts uh, resin printed, which is a cool thing about Long Mill. They make the 3D parts available for you to print on your own. So when I get my 3D resin printer going again, I'm going to reprint out the feed and resin and let you know how that goes. One of the issues of the 3D printed part was the nylock nuts were difficult to hold in place and attach that they spun out in the holes, partly because I did not have them held in securely, but just food for thought. That's really only my third negative or caution on this I had. Uh, I did see some people receive some bad rails, but saw that CNC sent out corrected parts ASAP. So plus to them on that, uh, their Facebook community and presence in acknowledging their client base was a selling point to me as well. Uh, talking of selling points, let's look at the criteria I had for my next machine. At first, I was not sure what exactly I was looking for. But after a lot of reading people's thoughts on all these machines and their concerns and praises, came up with my top three list of wants or don't wants. Uh, first, I have to agree with a lot of the people out there that belt-driven machines were a no. In other words, I wanted rigidity in the machine and its parts. I had the 3D printer bot wooden kit, and while it also did the best it could given its wooden structures, when my speeds were too high, uh, they would hamper it as it would just rattle too fast and I just get messy prints. In a CNC machine, we're looking at the amount of stress and torque and pressure applied during cutting. And that just opens the door for skips when using a belt. So threaded linear rods are the way to go and no wood. And again, some of you may disagree with me on this and that is in your right to do so. This is just my own personal belief and preferences. Secondly, I wanted it to be open source, not proprietary or web-based software. I just do not like being tied into a specific software that you cannot transfer your work easily over to another software. Now, this is where some of us may differ again. Look at it this way. There are PC Android people, Apple people, and Linux open source people. Um, Apple people love their insular world where everything is guarded and you're only allowed to do what they allow you to do. The PC people live in a little less insular world, but still there is some leeway in your softwares and its behaviors. But there's still a master saying what is open and what is closed. Then you have the Linux open source crowd. We have complete freedom, but are relied on the surrounding community's availability and its willingness to communicate back to your questions. You are giving up some refined UI and, you know, having unbuggy software out the boot, but you are open to tinker and expand with it more so than the others. And for me, the long mill fell somewhere in between the PC and Linux crowd. The third thing I looked at um, was size. I know some of you would say that should be higher up the list and for you that may be the case. For me, sturdiness and software are more important than half or one or one and a half inches of a larger cut area. That really didn't play as big of an impact as those other two. Um, I, even, I had even contemplated going with machine half this size, but just didn't, I wanted that larger cutting area. If you had gone with the rectangle, your larger square uh, that you could cut out of it would be limited to that uh, depth. So that I really like this uh, kind of 24 by 24 cutting area. Remember my analogy of the PC, Apple, and Linux? Now, while it is fun to verbally spar with friends over each of our preferred ecosystems, 
they each suit our personalities and expectations. My Apple friends like that there is no question on the software they can use or need to use. In they are really just left to focus on the project at hand. On PC, they have several options and not everything is optimized in their preferred way, but they find a way to make it all work. For the Linux friends, they just wanna do it their way. Now, I kinda fall in between PC and Linux. Whereas, you might be more a diehard Apple or PC person, the people you should listen to are the people who listen to what you want to do with your machine. Notice in the three things I placed in my list of what I was looking for did not mention assembly. For me, that was not an issue. I kind of enjoy a more in-depth, almost Lego technique kind of build. There are those who want to go even further than that and source all their own parts and build it from scratch. While someone else may just want something they can put together in an hour. My build took well over six hours, and that was just for putting the machine together. Then, several hours of adding in the mounting for the control board, the border, the ho holder for the screen and keyboard tray, and mounting the machine to the table. There was just a lot of time involved. The best bet for you mulling over your choices need to come from what you want out of the machine. Write them down and see what you can live with, in what you cannot live with. Take for instance, I had boiled my choices down to the long mill and the onefinity, while I was already leaning harder toward the long mill. The nail in the coffin was the lead time at order. The long mill was approximately six weeks out, and the onefinity was, well, a little unknown, men, maybe two, three months, maybe. So, that was the last deciding factor for me to just go ahead and get the long mill. So far, I've been running my long mill for just uh, over a couple months. I still feel like I can fine tune some of the eccentric nuts and having a tiny bit of an issue with the Z depth, but I have adjusted and got it closer and closer to being just right. Before cuts, I go and make sure all the feet and railing uh, bolts are nice and tight. I make sure I have all the rails and rods and electronics uh, cleaned of any dust or debris before every use. I definitely need to get a dust collection system set up, but for now I am living with what I have. I have my machine up and running with a Raspberry Pi 4, which is running CNCJS on a 10 inch touchscreen. If you have not seen that video, go check it out after this one. Overall, I am very happy with going with the long mill. I have no buyer's re remorse. No man, I should have waited for the one infinity. It is a sturdy machine. It does take some loving and caring for, and it does take some time to build. But that's part of the alert for me. It makes you dive in and get to know your machine ahead of time, as opposed to when it breaks down later, and you're not quite sure you know why it did that or how to fix it. So you have a more intimate relationship with all the parts as you spent hours putting them together by hand. And I think that's what sets the long mill up as a good balance between plug and play and builds from scratch. Well, here it is, as it stands for now. I still need to do some cable management and I am looking into some cable extensions before I finalize that. I am still thinking out the final spoil board design, but for now, the setup I have works. Here for comparison, you can see the cutting area difference between my 3018 and my long mill. This kind of jump and cutting area is just awesome. Again, I still love my 3018, and I'm still going to keep using it, as it is still per a perfectly good machine. If it was not for it, I would probably be a lot further behind than if I had just gone with the larger machine at first. It taught me a lot and helped make the learning curve for the long mill a lot shorter. There are just so many variables to consider that your list of needs is gonna be different than mine. So take your time, do the research, understand what you need, and get what's going to work for you, not what worked for other people. For me, I love the long mill. I think it was a perfect choice for 
me. It fits my personality and what I like to. I, I find pleasure and pride in building these things up. And that's not to take away from anybody who gets a machine that is, um, you know, very simple and just takes about an hour, hour and a half to put together. And that's not to, you know, make light of what um, the people who build theirs from scratch do, or if they're made with wood. This is what works for me, and this is what I'm comfortable using. And it was great having the experience of the 3018 to help me determine what was going to work for me. So let's leave uh, that there. And in my recommendation for the long mill, two thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And again, thank you to all those who helped push the channel to what it is today. This channel has had me talking to people from all around the world. And it has been an unreal journey meeting and talking with all of you. Also, in my next video, I will be doing a giveaway to thank you all. So make sure you are subscribed for that. Right now, all the equipment and materials you see me use from this video back are all funded by me. I have no affiliate programs or paid product placements by any company. And if I do get to that place, no, I will always be upfront with you on that. So keep the comments coming. Go check out my social media. Subscribe if you have not. Watch some of my other videos. And more importantly, if you do not want to do any of that, keep making stuff. <laughs>